Kicking off the most memorable levels in video games is Facility from GoldenEye 007. It's the second level of the game, and while the first was a straight-up shooter, Facility features several different objectives with multiple ways to solve them. Plus, shooting all those Soviet soldiers in the bathroom is definitely a memorable way to start the mission. But while the single-player mission is good, Facility really shines in multiplayer. It is one of the first multiplayer maps that you can unlock, and since all of the objects have been removed, it's a perfect playground. Facility is extremely well designed with multiple entrances to nearly every room and plenty of space to shoot your friends. It's wildly regarded as one of, if not the best level in GoldenEye. Fans liked it so much that it was even ported directly into Perfect Dark Zero and has continually been remade in other games. Coming up next is a level from Dishonored. Now, it's important to note that Dishonored is a game that gives you a set of tools to complete an objective, offering little help or guidance along the way. That means that the game encourages you to experiment, and nowhere is that philosophy more prevalent than in the fifth mission, Lady Boyle's Last Party. Here's the objective. Find and neutralize Lady Boyle while she's holding a party at her mansion. The problem is that there are three Lady Boyles, since they are triplets, and you have to find out which one is your target. That's it. The result is a mission that gives you dozens of options for tackling a wide variety of problems. You don't have to fight anyone if you don't want to, and can instead enter the house as a partygoer. The greatness of Dishonored is on display in this mission, and it's one of the most iconic levels of the past 10 years. Half-Life 2 was one of the best games ever made, and its most memorable level is absolutely deserving of its spot on our list. We Don't Go to Ravenholm is set in the titular town, filled to the brim with zombies and fast zombies alike. It turns the sci-fi first-person shooter into a survival horror game, and is easily the creepiest level in the entire franchise. But more than just being terrifying, Ravenholm is the first chance for players to test out and use the gravity gun to its full potential. Ammo is in short supply, but there are plenty of objects that you can use with the gravity gun to fight back. Saw blades and explosive barrels will save your life here, and it teaches you how to properly use the environment to solve the puzzles in the later half of the game. Ravenholm is distinct from the rest of Half-Life 2, and its design makes it an experience that prepares you for the challenges to come. You may not want to play it again when you've beaten it, but you'll never forget it either. Our number two pick is none other than the first level of Sonic the Hedgehog, Green Hill Zone. It's a lush, grassy area filled with palm trees, cliffs, and vertical loops that show off just how fast our favorite blue hedgehog can go. You've probably got the song playing in your head right now, don't you? What makes the zone memorable is that its design highlights the best features of Sonic. It features long, open stretches to build up speed, impressive acrobatic feats and jumps, and plenty of hidden areas to discover if you can slow down for just a moment. It's also a great tutorial, as none of the obstacles or enemies are truly punishing, allowing you to get used to the mechanics. Green Hill Zone is so iconic that it's been remade countless times in other Sonic games. And even if a Sonic game doesn't feature it, the intro level will always be compared to Green Hill Zone. Just try to get its theme out of your head before we reveal our next pick, okay? Our most memorable level of all time is an easy pick. World 1-1 of Super Mario Bros. It's nothing short of being the most iconic level in video game history. It's the first level in the game, and it is also the best tutorial in video games. World 1-1 features a simple layout with plenty of obstacles that would become more complicated as the game went on. But it always foreshadows each threat and obstacle before you encounter it. It starts with a single Goomba, but the further you go, the more it teaches you about jumping, warp pipes, question blocks, and practically every core gameplay mechanic. It is a masterclass in game design. And that theme, it's so simple, so catchy, that is it any wonder that it's become one of the most iconic tracks in video game history? Altogether, World 1-1 is perfect, and there's nothing else in the world that even comes close to it.